What's interesting about new all-time highs, uh, my director of research, Michael Batnick, took a look at the median time between when you print a, a uh, closing high uh, until the next time. And it's actually, on average, about 90 days. So we're 126 days out from that date that you mentioned. So all things considered, if you remove that little chunk from March and April of what went on, actually, this looks like a pretty average year. And uh, what's really gratifying is that when you look at, you know, under the hood, what are the stocks that are, have gotten us back to this uh, potential closing record high? Look, the stay-at-home stocks, every time they look like they're going to roll over, somebody comes in and buys them. So look at uh, Zoom. That one looked like it was in trouble last week, technically. Right back up with an upgrade. Um, Tele Teledoc had this really nice uh, comeback. And then you think about um, DocuSign, Peloton. And all of them, when they looked shaky, they came back. So those stocks have been, have been fairly important. Um, but then take a look at home builders. XHB, you cannot find a name in this index that doesn't look incredible on a technical basis right now. The industrials are trading sideways after digesting a huge move to the upside. Materials are hanging in there. They're at record highs. They're not going anywhere. So I think when you consider the balance of all of the different things that look good right now, um, yeah, we're justified making a new high. You might not like how much of it came on the back of uh, multiple expansion, but wh what do you want me to do about that? I can't help you with yeah. that. Steph, I mean, it, go it makes me think of what Jim Cramer <laughs> said the other day of, of this grand slam, in, in his words. You've got all of these different areas that are now, you know, apparently working at the, at the same time when you, when you really consider. I think it's important to consider how we got here and why we are here off of those March lows. But more important is sort of now what is the big question. Yeah, I do hope that it widens out for sure. But look, the market's higher because the economy is, is recovering faster than expected. And it's discounting the profitability recovery faster than expected. And it's also discounting the potential for operating leverage. So you have the winners, like uh, Josh just mentioned, the stay-at-home beneficiaries. Um, so companies like AMD and P&G and Costco and Twitter, where the demand is there, but they also have put in place some good cost controls or they have pricing power. So they have seen a recovery in their earnings faster than expected, they should be the leaders. But just imagine if you actually got some of the laggards to start to see operating leverage. Just imagine if you saw FedEx increase their profitability by 50 percent, and they could do it if they get demand because they've cut costs so much. Same thing with PPG, same thing with UPS. So I'm looking at some of these stocks that haven't really recovered as much, where there's potential into 2021. In terms of that operating leverage, in terms of the better earnings, um, I'm not saying it's all or nothing. That's why I want to see it widen out. I can still see the winners win, but I want to see the laggards start to play catch up as well. And I think you're going to see that in 2021. John Najarian, it took less than five months to get back to these new highs. It's the third fastest rally to recoup all that it's lost. Mike Santoli takes a look at this as well and says that it's the strongest 100 day rally ever, ending the shortest bear market ever as well. Yeah, well, that's great work by Michael, as usual. And, uh, Scott, I would point to uh, the, uh, the amount of oomph that it causes, uh, or rather that is necessary to get these stocks to these levels. Um, I mean, this is not easy. A, a lot of folks, of course, two years ago, Scott, it was always the law of large numbers. And my, Michael Santoli, tip of the hat to you for that. Um, but... What we really witness here, Scott, is volumes of trade into these names. And it is uh, these volumes are not just high in the options, the derivatives. They're high in the underlying stocks as well. Obviously, some of that's driven by ETFs. We talk about that on this show a lot, that, you know, when you're buying these ETFs, those ETFs are buying the shares. Uh, and so the more people index in that way, the more that that provides that oomph. But Man, this is some serious lift, serious heavy lifting that these stocks have done. It hasn't been easy. And yet, as Josh pointed out at the top, very fast, extremely fast, and holding on to these gains, building on them virtually every single week, Scott. So those are all positives rather than just a, a sharp jump up and then a sharp uh, sell off right back down. Uh, that dip back down just hasn't come. Well, I just wonder, Bryn, what are the catalysts that are there to take stocks higher than, than where they are now? I mean, I think there's a statement in the market today that 
retail, you know, they have these big box blowout numbers, and yet the stocks are lower. Why? Because I think there's some doubt in the market as to whether it can continue, whether it was mostly stimulus-backed gains. Consumers had money in their pockets. They were spending it in places that had their earnings today, whether it was Home Depot or Costco, and then they're going to probably look good at Target and Lowe's tomorrow. But is it sustainable? Yeah, well, I think what's coming soon to a theater near us are earnings upgrades for the S&P and probably year-end price targets for the S&P, as so many people had pulled those earlier. And so if you look, like right now, we have about a little over 90 percent of the companies in the S&P have reported so far. And as it stands today, we're coming in almost $28 per share this quarter. Estimates were right under $23. So that's about a 20 percent beat on the upside. And so I think as we start moving later on in the year, we're going to get better guidance because I think, quite frankly, these earnings have been exceptional.